Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Gainesville. I'm glad you're here. I really appreciate uh, everything that you all do, and I uh, want to thank you for uh, for choosing Gainesville. You know, we're, we are a state clearly of lots of, uh, of conference properties, and uh, you could have chosen many, many places over our, our hundreds of miles, and I'm glad that you chose our, our city. We're very glad that, uh, that you're here, and I hope that you uh, have a good time, and I, I think there's some some real uh, opportunities to see the work that you all do, the sort of thing that you all do, really uh, contextualize and, and put into uh, to terms that uh, where you can see how it really changes lives in, in a community right here in Gainesville. So hopefully you'll be able to, to get out and do some of that as well. Uh, as the Ford Brandfields Association, I want to congratulate you on 28 years of, uh, of working to remediate properties and bring them from impeded to fantastic at locations across our state and in other places too, I'm sure, but we're worried about Florida today. When I was asked to speak here, um, I, I thought, well, sure, I, I know what Brownfield is. We, we've uh, done some, some Brownfield projects at the city of Gainesville. And then I started thinking, well, nobody's gonna confuse me for a civil engineer, so I better do some homework on this before I, I, I come speak. I do a lot of things well, but again, nobody thinks I'm an engineer, so we're, we're not gonna change that today, certainly, and I'm not gonna try to fool anybody. But I looked it up because I wanna make sure that I knew the difference between um, just thinking what a brownfield is and, and knowing the difference between an actual brownfield and a uh, just a difficult site and a, uh, an EPA uh, Superfund site. We have one of those in town too that I'll talk a little bit about later. Um, but we've got some great examples of what the EPA defines as a brownfield, a property where expansion, redevelopment, or reuse may be complicated, which is a nice way to say it, by the presence or potential presence of hazardous substances, pollutants, or contaminants. Now that's a pretty broad, uh, pretty broad stroke, but we all kind of, on, on my side of the table, we all kind of know what a brownfield is. It's a place where over the years, people like me, city leaders, community leaders, developers, thought that's a great place for a gas station, or that's a great place for a cement plant, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, going back in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, maybe even into the 70s, we thought, we need progress on this block, and we're not maybe gonna require that they put the, the right kind of lining around that gas tank. We need that, that gas station to be here. And that seemed like a good idea at the time. Uh, we often um, allowed the idea of progress, the idea of prosperity, particularly in Florida, to, uh, to get ahead of, of protecting the neighborhoods that were surrounding it, protecting the natural environment, that we were obviously uh, going to be impeding and, uh, and impacting in the process. Well, as time moved on, uh, and uh, we all learned more, or were willing to admit what we already knew more, um, we, we looked around and realized through government regulation and through just civic responsibility, that in many cases what we had done was scar the land and scar the neighborhoods surrounding the land and create you know, places that, that were potentially difficult to uh, expand, redevelop, or reuse, as the EPA says. And then we decided that those were brownfields. And in Florida, it, it looks different. It looks different, certainly, in, in our community than it does in a place like Cleveland or Detroit, where they've got a whole different set of, of, of problems. When I talk to mayors in those places, they're really doing a very different uh, sort of remediation. They're talking about entire parts of their downtown, entire river fronts, entire <clears throat> lake fronts. And what we're doing, especially in Gainesville, is a much more, probably smaller, but definitely uh, more neighborhood-based uh, in, in Gainesville sort of thing. One of, the, um, one of the things that really leaps out at me that might help uh, contextualize the work that you do, because I know, you know the work you do, but it's easy to get deeply involved in what that work is, the technical aspects of it, and moving paper from one place to another, and seeking grants and, and, uh, and authorizations and, and all that sort of thing. Sometimes you don't see the impact that your work is having on the people around you and, and the communities that you're working in. So I want to try to contextualize a little bit of that for you this morning. 
When I was a kid, my family bought gas at the Dixie Oil, Dixie Oil Station on University Avenue, the East University. That's just what we did. There are plenty of gas stations that were in Zucks. That's where we, we bought gas. And it wasn't a full service station, but there were you know a couple of gas pumps and uh, you bought wiper blades there and you stop and, and chat with Jimmy, the guy who was always there to, to, to run the service station. And it, it was long enough ago that, that they would pump the gas for you if you wanted. So to, to give you an idea of how old I am. Um, but that was our neighborhood service station. And it was right there on University Avenue. Half the city drove by it, and we never gave thought to the fact that when it was built, they didn't really do a great job of, of putting the tanks in the ground, right? And, and the neighbors who lived behind it probably were not quite as healthy as they could have been because of that. And it just wasn't anything we ever thought about. And then as other more, uh, more complex uh, Jimmy stores and, and bigger gas stations opened up nearby. The, the Dixie Oil Station was just less important. And one day they closed. And that's fine. We all thought, it's Gainesville, it's Florida. Someone's going to replace that. It won't take any time at all. So it sat there. And the little awning above the, the tanks got rusty. And, and the, the concrete started to, to crack around it. And uh, one day they you know, demolished the, uh, the little uh, office area there and, and the, the awning stayed there big old uh, steel awning that just got rustier and rustier and we started to feel kind of bad about it being right there on University Avenue and then one day that all disappeared and for about 20 years it just sat there on our premier street in Gainesville as this, this big empty property and we all kind of got used to it just being there well, after I was elected to the Gainesville City Commission in 2017, uh, a few months later, we, we got a, uh, an opportunity to, to authorize a, a brownfield uh, opportunity through, uh, through the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. And I was so excited because it was the Dixie Oil Station. And I didn't really know what a brownfield uh, grant was then, and, and I did my research, ran my backup, and it was one of the coolest things we had been able to do because not only were we gonna uh, help someone clean up that site and that neighborhood, but it also cleared the way for a new gas station, which was a whole lot more than a gas station, I quickly learned, is Wawa. People love Wawa, y'all. I don't know if you've encountered this, but people love the Wawa. And it is, it has become not only a gas station on East University Avenue, it's where people gather in the mornings and the evenings. It's you know, so much more than that. It's funny how something as simple as getting fuel in your car becomes a community gathering place. And that's where I buy my gas. I go out of my way to go over there to, to buy gas there because I can stop and chat with constituents and people will come up to me and just tell me what's going on in their lives and in their neighborhood surrounding that Wawa on East University Avenue because you or people like you helped people like me and people at the Wawa figure out how to clean up a site and make a neighborhood better. You, through the work that you do, changed the lives of people who live adjacent to, to, to that empty brownfield site, made it better, and offered opportunities for people in my community to gather and see each other and have conversations and get fuel in their car all at the same time. And by the way, the revenue that the city of Kingsville gets from that site is a whole lot better than the revenue that came when it was just the old Dixie Oil Station. So thank you for that particular brownfield cleanup. But there's more. Brownfields very often, as you know, result from uh, building things that, again, seemed like great progress at the time in the place where people would have, would give the least pushback. You don't put things that develop brownfields next to a country club, right? Nobody ever did. You put uh, the cement plant next to the neighborhood that can't complain. You put the train tracks through a neighborhood that can't complain, and then you call it all progress. And to some degree it is, but it's progress done without bothering to talk to the people whose lives you have impacted in the process. So we, through a couple of things like that, through a cement plant 
and through train tracks, which we're all proud of. Our city seal is an old choo-choo train from the 1800s. We're gonna change that, by the way. Um, 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 bringing the train through Gainesville in the 1800s was a big deal. It was progress to have a cement plant to build the buildings that, that we've come to depend on. When you build things, you have to have a place and you invite new people in, you have to have a place to put the waste that is created by that. So that same area was where we had an unofficial city dump. All those things come together and it works fine for a few decades, right? And then when the train stops running and people start saying, well, it's not okay to keep running that cement plant right there. And you can't keep dumping garbage from all over the county in the middle of the city anymore. Then you realize you've created a real problem and that progress in fact had a price. And unfortunately, the, the, that, that price gets backdated and uh, it ends up in parts of your city that become unusable. So we ended up with 32 acres right in the middle of our city on Main Street, right by the railroad tracks, what used to be a crossroads that we could all be real proud of, where nobody wanted to go. When I was growing up in the 70s in this community, you didn't want to go to where Depot Park is right now. You just didn't. Nobody was around there. There were neighborhoods that were nearby. They could avoid it, obviously. But nobody went there on purpose. There was a, an old ice plant there, and ice plants really aren't a, a thing anymore starting you know, about that time. So it just was this empty space that used to be a train depot and a dump and train tracks and a nearby cement plant. And nobody gave any thought to it for a couple of decades. It just sat there like, like an empty tooth socket right there on Main Street. Some community leaders in the 90s got enough of that and decided there's opportunity here. There, there is there's a place for vision here that can make our community better. And starting in 1997, we started we, I wasn't involved, I was doing other things at the time. And when I read about it in the newspaper, I was pretty skeptical. Back when we used to have newspapers, you remember those? <laughs> um, I was skeptical. I, I thought, well, this is a, a, one of those big government projects that's just gonna fail. We're gonna talk about this for two or three years and then, and then we'll just move on from it. Well, no. We kept a community vision at City Hall and, uh, and through county government, through Florida DEP, and a whole lot of uh, private citizens who really decided it was time to, to make something better happen there. And we took that 32 acres of contaminated downtown and turned it into what I think is one of the best parks you will find anywhere in the Southeast. I'm bullish on Depot Park. It is pretty great. If you get the chance to go to Depot Park while you're in Gainesville, please do that. It is really terrific. There's a kids play area. There is, um, just, I'll tell you a little bit about it. It's, a, it's fantastic. It's a huge undertaking, again, 32 acres with uh, on a site that had railroad debris, cement plant waste, petroleum tank farms, uh, manufactured gas plant, coal tar residue all over the property. It was a huge undertaking that required the property being excavated 50 feet down and 147,000 tons of contaminated soil removed. In addition, 40, millions, 40 million gallons of contaminated water was treated and discharged. 40 million gallons. And the vision for the park, which again started in 1997 and didn't get the ribbon cut until 2015, so nearly 20 years of consistent vision through lots of different leaders turning through City Hall, they were able to maintain that vision because of folks like you who said, yeah, it's a little crazy, but it's possible. It's possible. And we maintained that vision here in the city of Gainesville and used uh, our fantastic public works department to design ponds for the site. And those ponds now capture and treat stormwater for 89 acres of downtown Gainesville. Uh, the ponds are a bastion of wildlife in addition to playing a role, huge role, in our water filtration process. We have a, as part of the Depot Park site, we've got a renovated train station that uh, houses um, a community meeting space and uh, a couple of drinking establishments and uh, a little convenience store that serves the people who are using the, the park. It's also adjacent to and as part of the land, uh, the Cade Museum exists there. The Cade Museum for Creativity and Invention 
Uh, it's committed to transforming communities and inspiring and equipping future inventors, entrepreneurs, and visionaries. It's named after uh, Dr. Robert Cade, the lead inventor of Gatorade. The project began in 2006 with a, gener a generous gift from Dr. Cade and his family, and um, they started offering educational programming and the Cade Prize for Innovation in 2010 and cut the ribbon on the museum, which is kind of the keystone of the Depot Park area, in 2018. Uh, since then, we've had more than 100,000 visitors experience uh, the Cade's unique hands-on programming, and all of that happens. The Cade Museum and the, uh, the, the wildlife areas and the trails and the, uh, the, the kids' play area and the, uh, the renovated uh, train station, all of that happened because People like you and the folks at our city hall maintained a vision for nearly 20 years. They saw something in a, a, a former dump site that could be wonderful and could transform an area of town, and it absolutely has. And it's because people like you believed in vision from some crazy people at city hall and said, yeah, we can make this work. So that's one of the cool things, by the way, that, that I've learned is, is a key difference between a uh, Superfund site and, and, and a Brownfield site. Uh, Superfund site use words like enormous and deadly and, and intractable to, to, to describe. And Brownfield sites, we, we talk about things being manageable and possible and visionary. So you pick the right area when you, when, when you, you know, commit to Brownfields. So thank you for that. There are many examples, not only in Gainesville, but in your communities as well, where you all are doing this work and making it possible for, for communities to thrive. And that's a really big deal. So don't, uh, don't forget that when you go to work every day, you are changing people's lives. You are making the world a little bit brighter place. And it's, it's, it's important work that, that you all are doing, and I appreciate it. As somebody who, again, never going to be confused for an engineer, I can't do the work that I do at City Hall. I can't make visions for a better community into a reality without folks like you making things possible on South Main Street. Uh, later here in the conference, you're gonna hear from Mariko Shitama about how Depot Park provided an opportunity for her and her family to transform a former lumber yard, which of course was across the street from, from the uh, rail station, into uh, what we call now South Main Station which is an amazing complex of industry. They have a 40-year-old um, uh, woodworking site uh, there. Uh, they have commercial tenants. There's a sound stage, Hartwood, uh, Hartwood Sound Stage, which is phenomenal. Uh, four restaurants now, I think. Brand new uh, independent bookstore, The Links. All of that is, is there and happening. This economic impact is going on because of work that people like you have, and actually some of you, uh, have done. I really hope you're able to get down there and take a look at that. Um, there's a lot more we're going to do there. We've actually got, uh, the city of Gainesville has a, uh, uh, we're under a code of silence right now for uh, um, bringing in a new uh, solicitation for Brownfield work. So there's more to be done through our, our, uh, our CRA and our public works here in Gainesville. So stay tuned, there, there's more big stuff coming here in Gainesville. Uh, several of you have noted to me this morning that uh, you went to school here or grew up here and you didn't recognize me until we came back. It's okay. <laughs> Trust me, it's okay. It's a good thing. Uh, we're no longer a sleepy college town. Uh, when I was born here in 1967, there were about 60,000 people here. Now there are, in the city limits, about 150,000 people here. And in the larger metro area, we're serving about 250,000 people. And more people than that depend on this community. You know, people come from all over, send their children from all over Florida and all over the world to be educated. People come from all over the world to be healed at our health centers here in Gainesville. We're proud of the, the clean industries that, that we offer. But again, all of that happens because people like you do the work of clearing the space and making it possible to build new hospitals and, and new buildings for the University of Florida and <clears throat> new parks and all the things that, that our community depends on and can enjoy. I'll leave you with this idea, um, a, a quote from, uh, from Thoreau that, that I tripped across a day or so ago. To affect the quality of the day that is the highest of the arts. To affect the quality of the day that is the highest of the arts. 
That is, at the end of the day, what you all are doing is affecting the quality of someone's day. The folks who live in the neighborhoods surrounding Depot Park or behind that old Dixit oil station, you've affected the quality of their day every day. That is the highest of the arts, and I thank you for engaging in that work, and I thank you for being uh, here again as well.